Yes, lads, welcome back to episode four of the Borussia Dortmund career mode. To start off today's episode, we get straight into the press conferences. The questions which we've got to answer at the start of every episode. To start off with, Mr. H plays the club rejected a bid for the hood this window. Does that mean he's considered competition for Chan and Bellingham? Because he would be guaranteed to start games elsewhere in Europe. Yes, he is. He's such an integral part of this team. Might only get 30 games this season, but we're definitely going to sell him this season. But potentially we might sell him next season. The next question is from James Werdenham. Werdenham? I can't speak, sorry. Should look to bring in Anthony Gordon, a great English prospect, which is a good idea, to be fair. English guys like the Bundesliga, yes, they do. They really do. I'd love to bring in a sort of Sancho replacement as a young English talent for this new season. And finally, did you change the forfeits you failed to win the DFB Pokal? I did not, but now, right now, I am saying that if we don't win the DFB Pokal, the forfeit for the first episode will be, like, valid if we don't win it. The next question is, uh, if you, if I think you should swap Haller with Werner because Haller is now injured and Dortmund are looking for a replacement. See, I like to keep it realistic, but I feel bad for Haller, and I just don't think it's respectful to do that. Especially on a FIFA game, but, you know, we could bring in Werner in the future. The next one is, if you make Guerrero a centre mid, he goes up to like an 87 rated. Someone then com commented he actually goes up to an 88. He's currently our left wing back, so we're not going to change him just yet. But in the future, that could be a viable option when we get a bit better in Season 2. Next two questions come from next season, you can bring in Mitrovic. You know what, I'd love to do that, Keen. I really would. I'll see what happens... You know what? It'd be lovely. It wouldn't be immersion breaking since he's such a talented footballer and we'll see what January brings along. We need some backup for Haller, don't we? And the final question, could you up the injury sliders? You know what? In episode five, I am going to do this. And another comment was, what what difficulty do you play on? Can you up it to the highest? We play on ultimate guys with sliders. In the Real Madrid career mode, we had, we had like a full episode. Same with Everton. I'm just good at the game in a non-big-headed way. I just, I've got a lot better at the game than I was at the start. I used to play on World Class and Legendary. Now I play on Ultimate because I've played... I've got like 160 career mode episodes on the entire channel. So you can imagine how that's gone so far. But yeah, we're going to uh, get on with the first game of the episode. Which is a simulation in the Champions League against Besiktas of Turkey. Obviously bottom of the group in our UCL standings currently. So it should be quite a straightforward game, I want to say. Obviously you can't... Can't say everything is straightforward, but we are going to give Collins his debut this season. Um, Luke Kinnett is going to come in as a left wing back as well. Quite a youth, youthful team we've got playing, I would say. Adiemi and Marlon starting as well. Front three averages about 21 years old. So simulate this game and we get the 1-0 victory. Not exactly comprehensive, but Emre Chan scoring and stepping up in uh, an important game. He did captain the side tonight. 8.6 rating for him, level with Gregor Kobal as well. So good little start to the episode. I must say the Champions League is obviously, we've already gone through, but we just need to keep it up and move on into the second game of the episode. The first played one, which we've got, and we have got RB Leipzig, currently second in the table in the Bundesliga at the Red Bull Arena in Leipzig. It's quite a difficult game this, it really is. We'll see our team before we start. Kobal starts in goal, as you would expect. The back five, we have got More. Schlotterbach, who's still number nine. I've changed the numbers. We've got Hummels, Koulibaly, and Guerrero as the back five. Bellingham and Milinkovic Savage as the midfield two. And then Marlon, Ruiz as the captain, and Haller as the striker. So a very strong team. I have changed the numbers by the end of this episode. So in episode five, we'll have all correct numbers. And we will get into the first highlight. So four minutes in, the ball's played beautifully across to Nkunku, who hits it on the touch and volley. It's a brilliant save early on by Kobar. Koulibaly making his Bundesliga debut. Lost flight of the ball, to be fair. Not great defending by him. The ball is coming from Gavardial. He wins the header. It's a great save. And uh, we're still nil-nil in the game. So Pippa coming in the 11th minute. Allah's got the ball. He turns his man. klosterman has got a lot more pace than him, but he can't shrug him off the ball. Allah's got a chance to make it 1-0 off the crossbar and in against Peter Galashi and Sebastian Allaire, with all the composure, power and pace in the world, makes it 1-0. By the way, saying P's and B's is detrimental to my audio. It really causes problems sometimes. It makes it sound like I'm spitting, but I'm not. It's just it's just the sound of the mic. But yeah, we are 1-0 up already. Then the 25th minute, Bellingham makes a run through the middle. Pass it off towards Marlon. He's got a chance to score here. Sweaties it across to Ale and Sebastian. Ale makes it 2-0. Brilliant start to the game from him. Excellent ball from Jude Bellingham as well. And the pass by Marlon. It's a bit sweaty to do against the AI. But we are now 2-0 ahead. And in the 34th minute, Yanazai's got the ball in towards Andre Silva. Forsberg 
Look at the back heel pass, brilliant ball. And it's an excellent save by Gregor Kobal. That ball through by Emil Forsberg there was tremendous with the back heel. And Andre Silva really should have scored. But sluggish finish from the big Portuguese striker. But that is all we uh, concede for the first half. Only a couple of chances for them. Only a couple for us. But we took ours very, very well. And we're 2-0 ahead in the first half. So it will restart in the second half, though, in the 70th minute. Bellingham's got the ball. Finds a through ball off his man. Looking for the back post run of Allaire. Hits it. Great save. He decided not to pass to Allaire for his hat-trick. And it was a brilliant save, though by Galashi but we do get the corner we are looking in the middle for a big player to win this header Emre Chan getting up really really well and it's wide of the post wasted chance from Chan but we're not quite done yet then 76 minutes Bellingham's got the ball again sprints away from Klosterman look how dead Klosterman is 84 paces getting you nowhere sunshine will he score will he sweat it to Sebastian Allaire who seals his hat-trick with a wonderful first time volley finish and Bellingham Crucial and integral to that goal. Yet again, the heartbeat of the side. And we are now 3-0 ahead for the uh, final whistle game in Leipzig. So, yeah, brilliant game all round. Kobal played really well, to be fair. I'm not going to say much, but Gregor Kobal has started this season really, really well. I had him in the Everton career mode during seasons two and three, I think. Yeah, I think it was two seasons I had him for about 20 episodes. And he was genuinely sensational all the way through. Not one mistake as far as I remember, or at least not one which was, I don't know, like Schwallow in the Hertha Berlin career mode or Pickford in the Everton one. Just, uh, or even Gazzaniga in the Fulham, I'm plugging them all now. But yeah, still excellent result through and through. 3-0 away victory, 10 ratings for Aller and Kobal. And we'll go for another simulated game now, which we've got in the Bundesliga this time. So uh, we're obviously on 31 points from 11 games played. We've actually got a little bit to go through with the youth player we're going to promote in the next episode. Valentin Sommer is now 63 rated, 17 years old. He needs to play 20 games this season. Like at least, maybe not start many. He might start four or five, but he needs to come on as a sub for the remaining 15. But yeah, we're going to try and work through that. We've got a game against VFB Stuttgart. I'm just going kind to of Simix. They're a decent team, Stuttgart. We'll play our strongest side and we get a 2-1 victory. Bellingham opens the score in the 25th. And then Forster scores in the 75th. And how many last-minute goals have we scored this season? This time, Nicolas Sula, formerly of Bayern Munich and Hoffenheim, in the 90th minute, gave us a 2-1 win. And Bellingham receives the man of the match with an 8.3 rating. The heartbeat of the side is Jude Bellingham. Another excellent performance by him, or so it seems. And we'll move on swiftly into the next simulated game, because obviously we're trying to get through a lot of games. We've got about seven or eight games this episode. This is a dead rubber in terms of the importance of it. We've already, like, topped the group, essentially. And obviously, Sporting are bottom of the group. So, if they win, if they draw, it doesn't really matter. I really could not care less. But we'll indeed simulate this game and um, make a few changes as well. Because I just think we've got such a big squad. I mean, it's going to get bigger as well in um, in January. And the summer transfer window next year. Because we're going to do two seasons here, as far as it looks. If, if you're lucky, I'll do two seasons. I'm not sure yet. I'm thinking two. Obviously, you never know if I'm going to do one, though. Because I've got a lot I want to get through before the new FIFA comes out. Um, just a quick one about the new FIFA. I am on holiday for the first week of release, which I didn't realise. But I'm going Tenerife, so I'm, I'm literally not bothered. I'm literally not bothered. But we'll simulate this game and uh, see if we can beat Sporting Lisbon. And of course, we get a draw. 2-2. Two -two. Actually, not the best result, to be fair. Uh, Mateus... Who's that? Mateus R. I thought Mateus Nunez. Mateus R. Opened the score just before half-time. In the last 24, 34 minutes of the game, is it 24 minutes? 24 minutes of the game, we did get two goals. And then in the 88th minute, Ruben Vinagra got the equaliser. So, one of the match that game was Doniel Marlon. Nothing really to talk about, just one of them games. Average game, who cares? Move on into a playable game. We've got a few play, played games before the end of the episode now. And we will start with that next played game, which we just, uh, which we just spoke of. And you see the green and white in the background. You see the big W which is not going to be what Wolfsburg see at the end of this game. But we have got VFL Wolfsburg, of course, at the Volkswagen Arena. We'll see our team as well before kickoff. And we start with Gregor Kobal in goal. Is anything ever going to change with that? Probably not. The back five is Thomas Munier, Nicholas Sula, Mats Hummels, Akanji and Guerrero. Midfield two of Bellingham and Milinkovic Savic. Then the forward trio of Reyna, Captain Royce and Karim the Dream Adiemi for the next big game in the Bundesliga title race against third place Wolfsburg. So after the team talk given by Kobal, we'll start the first half of the game in the eighth minute. 
Maximilian Philippe finds the ball to Johannes Wind. Campagna's got a chance to form a Levante man. Shot saved wonderfully by Gregor Koba. We're trying to get the ball away. Wolfsburg intercept the ball. I hate this pitch, by the way. It's a white ball, EA. Sort it out. It should be orange. You silly boys. But they do retain the ball very well. Luca Waldschmidt plays the ball back towards Schlagler. Arnold's got the ball now. Looking inside for the pass towards Philippe. Who's got a chance. It's another good save by Gregor Koba. The next out of the game, though, comes towards us in the 17th minute. Wolfsburg actually win the ball back well. Milinkovic Savic wins it back even better though. Royce with a chance in the 18th minute. Low driven shot past the Belgian number two, Cohen Castiles. And that is a wonderful finish by our captain, leader, legend, Marco Royce for an excellent goal. All important goal as well in this start and intro of this game. Brilliant win back by uh, Milinkovic Savic. Another assist for him. The finish by Royce. Exemplary as always. So the next out of the game comes just before half time. Campagna's got the ball for Wolfsburg. Looking for a pass inside. We can't actually get the ball off him. Vin's got it now. Back towards Arnold. Who hits one from distance. And Maximilian Arnold with a brilliant finish. Oh my days. Literally top corner. Excellent goal. Just before half time as well. And that is of course what the half time score finishes as. We go to the half time break. Half time interval. Whatever you want to call it. With a bit of doubt in our minds. Come on boys. Let's pick it up a little bit. So in the second half we get the next highlight in the 68th minute. We get a chance with Zavich, the shot's blocked. Bellingham's got a chance from distance and it's an easy save for Cohen Castiles. Bellingham's been really good so far this episode, hasn't he? The heartbeat of the side, that's what he is. But the next corner comes in, Castiles punches it clear. Comes back out towards Marlon, the Dutch international. Look for a cross back in towards Akanji, who wins the header. It's a wasted chance, plays it back out towards Guerrero. Now Hummels, now Bellingham again with the ball, looking to pass it out wide towards Guerrero. I can't even see the ball, I'm not going to lie. Another shot by Savage from distance. It's a good save by Castiles. In the 79th minute, though, we do get another chance. Rayner beats his man Brooks. He's still got to beat the keeper, that's the hardest part. It hits, well, it's a good save by the keeper. And that is the full-time whistle. Oh dear, it's a draw against Wolfsburg at the Volkswagen Arena. I mean, is that just not proof that it's an ultimate? If that were world-class or legendary, I'd have been winning about 5-0. But Cohen Castiles had a wonderful game. Really, really good performance by the Belgian number two and the Wolfsburg number one. Now 86 rated on FIFA, of course. The former Hoffenheim number one. Very good goalkeeper in real life, to be fair. Just an absolute unit. It reminds me of Nick Pope. He just uses his size for his advantage. He's such a big unit of a man. And uh, Cobra gets a 7.2. Castiles gets a 10. Perfect 10, followed by an 8.7 by Maximilian Arnold. Savage got an 8.4. And Royce got like an 8, I think. I think Royce played quite well that game as well. It's one of them games though, guys. It just it just happens sometimes. Royce got an 8.7, but Castiles carries Wolfsburg to a draw. But it is what it is. It's by the by. Who cares? Doesn't really matter at all. And uh, we'll move on into the next game of the episode now. I've got the DFB Pokel second round draw against Briel, Donald, and Bolo's Brushy, Munch, and Gladbach. Very, very difficult tie. We've got the Brushy Derby again. Whatever it's called. It's called something like that. Some nonsense along the lines. But very difficult game nonetheless. And uh, round three, so I can't wait to get into the team. So, Gobal starts in goal. Back four of Moray, Sula, Schlotterback and Nets. Midfield three of Dahoud, Chan and Sally Oskan. Then the forward trio of Marlon, Royce and Sebastian Allaire. So, very strong team yet again. And the first highlight comes the way of Munchen Gladbach. The shot's blocked very quickly. Neuhaus has got the ball. Hits one. It's well blocked by Suler, I think. No, it was Schlotterbach, weren't it? But yeah, very good block there. We're still in the 14th minute. They've still got another chance for this attack. Elvedi gets up well. It's deflected just over the bar. And we're very fortunate not to be behind early on. They've still got another corner. But this time, we do manage to get the ball away for the end of that attacking run. So in the 26th minute, Dahoud's got the ball. He sprints away from Frederic. It's a good chance here for Mahmoud Dahoud. But to beat the keeper, of course, he gets with a front post finish. And Mahmoud Dahoud with a brilliant finish to put us 1-0 ahead. He does a little Gini Wijnaldum celebration, which I've only just discovered how to do, to be fair. But still, absolutely brilliant goal from the former Munchen Gladbach midfield starlet. He's come on leaps and bounds in the last couple of years. Very, very good player in real life. Very talented on the ball. And he's made it 1-0. Very, very nice to see. In the 33rd minute, though, we do get a corner. We're looking in the middle for the big man, Alain. Royce chips one in. Good ball in. Alain all alone in the box. And we're 2-0 ahead already. Sommer forgets to use his hands, but it's a brilliant goal by Sebastian Allaire for his like, 15th goal of the season already. Another assist for Marco Royce. 
as we uh, go into the first half interval 2-0 ahead in the Borussia derby. Very, very good first half. Two goals inside six minutes. And, um, yeah, very nice to see. We'll restart shortly in the second with the first highlight coming in the 48th minute. And it's going to be a goal. Marlon plays the ball in towards Dahoud, who takes a touch on the weak foot from distance. Mahmoud Dahoud, our midfield, is absolutely stacked. He doesn't start. And just to reply to the comment from Swaz Careers, he's good. I mean, we don't want to get rid of him. That's why we rejected the offer for him. He's such a talent in real life. Such a tremendous dribbler of the ball. Excellent passer. And when he's got finesse shots like that, he's got finesse shots for days, essentially. Brilliant finish by the Hood. And um, that is the all-important goal to seal the game. But we're not quite just done yet, are we? In the 55th minute, Bellingham's got the ball. Brilliant through ball towards Sebastian Aller. Can he ball roll the keeper in a little skill finish? What a goal by Sebastian Aller. 4-0 now in the Borussia derby. And it's becoming an absolute hammering. It really is. Bellingham's turned into the complete midfielder. He really is. Excellent through ball by Bellingham. As I say, that heartbeat of the side. Another assist for him and another goal for Sebastian Aller. And then we're not quite finished. One more final chance in the 81st minute. Marlon gets down the line very well. Looking to pull it back to his man. Great skill by Marlon. Bellingham with a chance. Bellingham with a brilliant finish to make it 5-0 on the night. This is becoming a stupid cricket score. It really is. What a finish by Jude Be Be Bellingham. I can't even speak there. A little, little bit of a stutter there. Another one there as well, to be fair. But 5-0 victory against Borussia Mönchengladbach. Bellingham, again, tremendous performance. A complete midfielder. So talented. Really, really good. 19 years old, let's remember in real life. 19 years old and that damn good. As you can see from the stats, though, 16 shots, 4.3 expected goals to 9 shots, 2.5 expected goals. Obviously, Gregor Kobal had another good game yet again. 7.9 for him. Very solid, which you'd expect. Is he better than Neuer? Probably not. Not Maybe not Maybe not yet. Maybe not yet. Give him another year or so. 84 rated still. Excellent performance by our Swiss number one shot stopper. And Bellingham and Dehoud, all important in this game. Marlon with three assists as well. Excellent performance from the Dutch international striker, Sebastian Aller. Takes on the match ball with two goals and a nine averaged rating. So yeah, that's the final bit for that game. And we'll move on into the final game of the episode or the second to final game I should play because we've got a simulation still to play of course so we've now got Bayern Munich in the Classica and it's a really big game this we can't we can't lose because they're actually gaining ground on us in the Bundesliga since they've gone on that awful run to start the season off they've actually been tremendous since then I don't think they've lost I think they've won every game out of the last six so um, yeah they're in some form we're at the Signal Iduna Park of course for match day 14 near the halfway stage of the season already and we'll see our team before we kick off. And Bayerns. So obviously, Kobal starts in goal. Back five, as always. Moray's tired, so Munier comes in as a right wing back. We've got Sula, Hummels, Akanji, and Guerrero as the back five. Bellingham, Milinkovic, Savage as the midfield two. And then Royce, Reyna, and Allaire as the striking trio. And about three former Bayern players in that starting lineup. So we'll see Bayern's team as well. The 4 2 3 1 comes into effect again. I don't know why, but they don't play Sadio Mane. And I can't think the world of me why. It's a very strong team, as you can see, though. Obviously, they're playing Tolisso instead of Masraoui as well. It's very strange. But, you know, I don't question this game anymore. It's just unrealistic. But we'll start the first uh, highlight of the game inside the 21st minute. Royce has got the ball. Finds Sebastian Allaire. He's got a chance to beat his defence here. Gets past Matthias to lit too easily. It's a good save by the former Schalke keeper, Neuer. So, pick up in the 36th minute. 10 minutes before the end of the half. Guerrero's got a chance here. He gets past Tolisso. He hits one from distance. Edge of the box. Rafael Guerrero, where did you get that? Where did he steal that left foot from? I know he's always had a good, like, dribbling ability. And he can crack one from distance. His free kicks are excellent. He's a dead ball specialist. I haven't seen him do that in a couple of years. That's a wonderful goal. Another assist for Marco Ruiz. It's an excellent goal, though, by Rafael Guerrero to put us 1-0 ahead. In the 45th minute, Bellingham loses the ball. I've been singing his praises all episode. Muller plays it in towards Jovic. Chance for Goretzka. And Leon Goretzka makes it 1-1. Ah, that's a little bit rough, that is. Unfortunate for Bellingham, who's been the star of the episode so far. The midfield maestro himself. And just before the final whistle goes for the half-time interval, Bayern get back in the game. The Bavarian beast make it 1-1 uh, in the game. So, Pippa Cup in the 73rd minute. The ball's played out wide towards 
Daniel Marlin, who's got a chance to run down the line, looking for Adiemi in the middle, who gets a chance, front stick off the post. And that was so unfortunate for the end of the game. The only highlight of the second half, and we were really unlucky not to win that game, to be honest. 1-1, one, one, though. Not too bothered. I'm really not. Just one of them games in it at the end of the day. We still, we still played well. We still did what we needed to do. Uh, eight shots to six. Two expected goals to 2.7. Why do Bayern always have better expected goals? I don't even think they deserve that. Again, Bellingham was, was still superb in that game. Just unlucky with the goal. It was my fault, really, with dribbling. But, I mean, it's just one of them. He still got a 7.1 and he gave away a goal, essentially. Goretzka gets the man of the match with a 7.8. They bought on Mane, but they're not starting him. And I, I literally can't figure it out for the life of me. He's your best player. He's your best outfield player at 89 rating. It's just bizarre. It, it really is. But we move on into the final game of the episode now. And also the rundown of this episode. So I think we have managed to get eight games out of this. I'm pretty sure it's eight games. I might be wrong. We've got the, actually got the final game of the UCL. And you might think, why don't you play it since it's a, a like a Champions League decider who wins the group. But I know we're going to win. So I'm not that fuss. There's no stakes to it. They've got Suarez. They've got Tadic. They've got good players. But they've not got players like we have. We've got... We've got ballers in this team. We really, really are. But a few changes to the side we're going to make to start off with. Obviously, Chan needs to come in because Milinkovic Savic is absolutely shattered. Bless him. Plays a lot of games every season, doesn't he? And obviously, Ozcan plays a lot of the UCL games. Because he plays that Vitzel role fantastically well. But we'll simulate this game against Ajax of Amsterdam. Hopefully, we get the dub and we get a 3-1 victory. Karim Adiemi with two goals. Marlon with the opener against his former rivals and Tadic with a goal in the 19th minute. But 3-1 victory. Comprehensive or what? Really, really good result there. Adiemi obviously with the important goals. Also gets the Man of the Match award as well. Very, very nice to see. Really, really good performance all the way through. I just can't believe we've won that game 3-1 to be honest. But yeah, we do. We do. We win it 3-1. We top the group on 16 points. They finished second on 13 or 15 I think. Or is it 12? Oh, no, it's 12 because they didn't win. They didn't win. It's 12. Sorry. Let me just get my math sorted. Not the best at maths. But, yeah, guys, that's the end of the episode, basically. Got two minutes left to round out the end of the episode. Not too important these next two minutes. But, you know, you might hear something you're interested in. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. But, yeah, we look at the end of the table uh, for the episode. And we're 14 games in. 11 wins, 3 draws, 0 losses. 30 goal difference, 20 above the nearest best, which is RB Leipzig and 36 points. Werder Bremen, Bochum and Berlin also occupy the final three relegation places. And then we have the top scorer in the league, Patrick Schick. Good for him. 11 goals for him. Haller's got 10. Tyrone's not scored this episode. He's still on 9. And Royce is still on 7. He's only scored once this episode. I believe against Wolfsburg, I think. But then we have the top assist in the league. Royce is on 7. Phillips on 6, along with... Orsic and then Paulson and Bellingham and Guerrero and Dahoud actually round out the rest of the top seven with four apiece. So yeah, very, very nice to see, to be honest. Kobal's also joint top at clean sheet, so I'm not I'm not that fussed about that. We I think that's an objective, but I think we'll do it anyway. But yeah, guys, the player of the episode for that particular one was Jude Bellingham. I think that's a fair assumption to make for everyone else. He was fantastic. In the next episode, you have an away game against Bochum. A home game against Schalke, then an away game against Hertha Berlin. Then went to the January transfer window, going to make a new sign-in. Then an away game against Eintracht Frankfurt. A home game against SC Freiburg. An away game against Hoffenheim. A home game in the Cup against Bayern. We'll probably finish that off. But yeah, I, I, I don't know what's going to happen. You, you know that as well as I do. But yeah, I'm going to say the player of the episode today was Jude Bellingham. I think that's a very deserved thing to say. So take that off to Jude Bellingham. But yeah, guys, that's all I've got for today's episode. It's been it's been mega, and it we've done pretty well. You can see the player of the episode on your screen now. I really appreciate you watching the British Dortmund Kramer episode four. As we can see, he's the heartbeat of our side, and we'll see more of him in the remainder of the season. Hopefully, more of you guys. So see you soon. Take care. Thank you very much.